Hello, aspiring actuaries. My name is Michelle. This is Actuarial, my actuarial YouTube channel. If you want to support miscellaneous actuarial content, feel free to thumbs up, subscribe, all the YouTube -y things. Today, I wanted to talk about a difference between pricing and reserving actuaries that I don't think a lot of people talk about. I don't know if I've ever heard anyone talk about it. And since I worked five and a half years in pricing, I've been working 10 months in reserving, I think I am in a position to comment on it. If you don't know me, I work in property and casualty insurance. I used to price car and home insurance, and now I work in reserving. No one is under the impression that working as an actuary is a warm and fuzzy job. We're not saving sick puppies or feeding orphans. It's not the kind of work that like fills your soul with that, mm, I'm doing something good for the world feeling. That being said, I do fundamentally to my core believe that insurance is a fundamental good to society. Society. After something bad happens, a big car accident, your house burning down, insurance is the difference between getting back to normal and debt spirals and generational poverty and really bad things happening to a person's life. If enough people didn't have insurance, it would have broad implications on the economy. Like insurance is fundamental to the life and the economy that we are a part of. Whether or not that fundamental part of our lives should be governed by a for-profit institution, that's a whole other conversation that we can have on a whole other day. Today, what I wanna talk about is the impact of the work that we do. As a pricing actuary, I impacted the customers of our business. I impacted the profits of the company. If I chose to raise prices to a certain segment of our book of business, the business that we did write was more profitable because we brought in more money. We probably also wrote fewer risks in that segment because higher prices, people will shop around and look elsewhere. I impacted the buying habits of our customers and I impacted the profits of the policies that we sold. Now, as an insurance company, we definitely have a little bit of control over the expenses and the claims that we pay out, but that ability to control costs is not dependent on the price that we sold the policy for. Once the policy is sold, we have to pay out the claim if it happens. As long as it's covered by the policy, we have to pay it out. The big differentiator that actuaries can control is how much we sold it for. We can't really control the claims payout portion. As a reserving actuary, I am not directly impacting the profit of the company anymore. What I am doing is I am impacting the perception of the profit of our company. Let me say that again. I am not impacting the profit of the company. I am impacting the perception of the profit of the company. To clarify, let me just explain a little bit again about what a reserving actuary does. I have videos on this if you want to watch others, but let's go over it. We, as an insurance company, as a publicly traded company, as a company that is regulated by the Office of the Superintendent of Financial Institutions in Canada, we have to report our assets, our liabilities, our profits, our losses to a bunch of different people, our shareholders, the regulators, all these people. We can't do that on a cash flow basis. We sell policies today that we might still be paying claims out for them in 10 years because it takes a while for things to settle, for us to figure things out. But we need to be able to tell you what our liabilities are today. My job is to tell you for all the claims that have happened on all the policies that we're responsible for, at the end of the day, far in the future, how much is that gonna finally cost us? So we do that by lumping similar types of claims for a similar period of time together and then we make our actuarial estimates and we project it into the future and we assess our liability levels. Example, all the car accidents in Ontario in accident year 2022. Now if, if it was 20 years from now, I can look back at all these car accidents from 2022 and say that it's going to be a hundred million dollars. In 20 years, all these claims will be closed. We'll know that it was $100 million. But today, I don't know that. Today, I'm estimating the future. I am projecting. I am guessing. Smart guesses, math guesses, but guesses. If I project that it is going to be only $80 million, I am making the company look more profitable than it is. I don't know that I'm incorrect. The real answer is $100 million. That's unknown. I say $80 million. The company looks more profitable than it is. The share price goes up. We sell more policies at this unprofitable level. Not great. 
On the flip side, if I put it at 120 million, we have a little bit of prudency. That's probably where we want to be. A little bit more conservative than what's actually happening, just to be safe. If I put it at 200 million because we're being real conservative, now the company is not looking nearly as profitable. We start raising prices, the share price goes down. We get into, we can't grow right now. We need to be profitable mode. Where I set the reserve level, 80 million, 200 million, 150 million, it's not going to change the fact that these claims are going to cost us a hundred million dollars we do not adjust our claim handling strategy based on the projections of future claims they're going to end up being what they're going to end up being it will circle back it will impact the share price it will impact our strategic decision making it will impact some pricing decisions and that's a real difference in what i used to do versus what i do now used to really impact profit now I impact how you think about profit. If you have any questions about pricing versus reserving, please let me know in the comments down below. While you're there, thumbs up, subscribe. I love you guys. Thank you for calling. Bye.